Dr. Klatz, recently in the New York Times, there was an article that implied that we really don't need to, to supplement with vitamin D and also that we have enough calcium. We don't need to take calcium. How much responsibility um, is there for someone to run an article like that? You never hear anything about the other side of it. And how does that happen? Well, unfortunately, Lyle, we live in a, a time where the media is mostly bought and paid for. Uh, you know, it's, it's an illusion to think that there is a free press uh, any longer in the United States. The vast majority of articles are, 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 are driven or, or, or written or paid for by the industry that uh, it affects. I mean, uh, you know, not that I'm against the pharmaceutical industry. I think the pharmaceuticals have their place and they're very important and they've saved millions of lives. But let's face it, the media receives a, a income of four to, I, I've heard as high as $5 billion a year in income from the pharmaceutical industry. That makes them the largest uh, purchaser uh, of media in America. And so if uh, a significant amount of uh, your income is coming from a particular client, you're going to want to make them happy. Um, also, there is an issue of, uh, of articles, uh, scientific articles, being penned uh, by ghostwriters, and, that, and, and this is in the media as well, where, uh, you know, where, where certain companies have articles and positions that they want to have placed and they have it penned and uh, they just uh, put one of their one, uh, physician's name on, on top of the article and so the articles come out and so in that way they're able to skew public opinion. Now with regard specifically to vitamin, uh, to vitamin D and to calcium, uh, I think you have to always measure, you always have to weigh the evidence. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of papers okay, in the, uh, from, uh, from good, uh, respected researchers that say that uh, a, a large percentage of people have vitamin D deficiency, especially blacks, and especially people living in the northern climates, okay, where they don't get enough sun, and people who even live in the southern climates and don't go out into the sun or wear clothes all over their bodies, you know, so they can't get direct sun exposure. These people tend to have lower levels of vitamin D, and there's also hundreds of papers on calcium and the benefits of calcium supplementation. So when I see a paper, a single paper coming out and saying, nah, 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 don't pay attention to those hundreds of papers from before, pay attention to us, and it gets headlines in New York Times, well, I kind of scratch my head and I wonder, and I say, does it meet my balance test? And no, it does not meet my balance test. And when you read the paper, at least the paper on uh, vitamin D, it's really talking about a range. And it's saying that most people are within the range. But what they don't tell you is, is that when they say they're within the range, they're in the lower range. They're not in the upper range. And it's like RDA, recommended daily allowance. RDAs, many people do not have a deficiency of RDAs, but they're sick just the same, or they're not optimally healthy just the same. The difference between make, having just enough to be within the range of RDA or having the optimal amount is quite a difference, oftentimes two, 300, 500% difference. So in this paper, they're talking about the range of vitamin D. And I suggest that the range that they're talking about is too low for optimal health. But they're calling it, they're saying it's okay because the majority of people are within the range, but the range is measured at very low levels. Do they have these same kind of programs aimed at the medical community? Oh, there's, a, there's an awful lot of disinformation out there, unfortunately. And it's... The problem is, is that the media is not doing their job. The media, the freedom of the press was created uh, by our forefathers and the Constitution for the purpose of the press protecting the public and providing the public the truth and being able to be watchdogs of industry that, that has gotten too big or too powerful or government that has gotten too big or too powerful. Well, we know that these situations in some cases occur and so you now because of that because the media is not doing their traditional job of providing accurate honest fair reporting balanced reporting reporting that goes beyond the headline that actually does the analysis i mean how many times you turn on tv and you hear a din depth analysis of the news it's gone it hasn't happened since the vietnam war there's no more 
uh, people like uh, uh, Cronkite or Eric Severod or any of these other news commentators who did a deep analysis of the news, it's not there. Because all we get is headline news, all we get is, is soundbite news. And it's very easy to deceive the public with sa if, only, if you only read the soundbite. Where would you suggest that the average consumer could go to learn or get the information behind what the real story is? If the consumer wants to know the truth, if the consumer wants to be protected, he has to do his homework. And by doing his homework, you have to go to multiple sources. You have to read past the headline. Don't read one article, read multiple articles. And read multiple articles, not from the same paper, but from different papers and even from alternative health or alternative news services. I get 80% of my information off the internet from alternative news services because I cannot, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say that, say this, but I cannot trust the mainstream media to tell me the full and the honest truth. I often have to times go to news services from outside the country, from overseas. Uh, if it's um, you know pharmaceutical information, I have to go to uh, professional societies to read their analysis. I have to go to uh, even competing organizations to read their analysis. You have to get it from at least three different sources, and and not three sources in the same publication or in the same field. One has to be from here, one has to be from there, one has to be from here, in order to really get an in-depth, honest view of what's going on. Or you have to listen to someone you trust, and that's someone who does do their homework, and someone who is a commentator, such as yourself, who looks deeply into these issues, or someone such as uh, my favorite source is, of course, the worldhealth.net, www.worldhealth.net, which is the official website of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. We publish a longevity newsletter, which is a, uh, a electronic magazine that, in fact, reports on the latest news and does analysis as well. Your current A4M meeting, yearly meeting here in Las Vegas, we're in Las Vegas today. Yes. There are five thousand people attending it. Those are 5,000 people who want the information. They use that website. And so basically, hopefully, as things go along, these are also questions we can ask our doctors. Absolutely, because it's not just 5,000 people. It's 5,000 health professionals. The vast That's majority right. of them, 90% of them are practicing physicians. So in reality, um, the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine is responsible uh, right now we have 22,000 member, or 24,000 members worldwide in 110 countries. And we have, uh, at this conference, 5,000 attendees. And we've trained over 100,000 physicians all around the world in the new science of anti-aging medicine. And as part of their training is their ability to critically analyze the news that is coming out in healthcare and the papers that are being published. And our doctors get a much broader view. They're they, these are not guys who just read the headlines. These are guys who read the whole article and also go to other places to, see, to read the analysis and to read the rebuttal of those articles. Again, it's a question of balance. You have to be able to balance the information and say, you know, where is truth? Truth is usually somewhere in between.